dears fourth grade students i hope all is well today we will have our second lecture about fixed orthodontic appliances we will cover some clinical aspects about fixed orthodontic treatment so we will start with fixing attachments and we have two terms in this regard we have banding and by banding we mean the procedure of cementing a band to the tooth and this procedure involves separation of teeth selection of proper band size with a close fit and cementation of the band and is preferably done using glass INMR cement so this video shows the process of separation and for which we use elastic separators that are stretched and placed between the teeth they will try to get their original shape and by doing so they will push the teeth to the side creating space for the placement of bands after separation the bands are tried and the one with the best fit is selected cement is applied to the inner surface of the band the band is reseated with the aid of a band pusher and a band seater then the excess of cement is removed and the cement is light cured bonding on the other hand is the method of fixing attachments directly to enamel using resin it greatly enhances aesthetics and maintenance of oral hygiene as compared to banding it requires pretreatment of enamel by applying phosphoric acid for 15 to 30 seconds then a chemically cured or light cured adhesive is used to fix the attachment to the prepared tooth surface and it may be done directly or indirectly and by directly we mean in the dental office and indirectly via the lab There are a number of indications that still exist for the use of a band rather than a bonded attachment. These include teeth that will receive heavy intermittent forces against the attachment. For example, when we have an upper first molar to which an extra oral force is placed via a headgear. Secondly, teeth that will need both buccal and lingual attachments, such as a molar with both headgear tube and a transpalatal bar and thirdly teeth with short clinical crowns so that the bonded brackets are difficult to place correctly and finally teeth with extensive restorations this video demonstrates direct bonding procedure we start by cheek retracting having proper moisture control then cleaning of teeth surfaces to remove any pellicle using slow hand piece and profi brush or cup the enamel surface is treated either conventional way by acid etching washing and drying then applying unfolded primer or applying self etching primer as in this video then we place composite resin on the bracket base We position the bracket on the tooth crown properly. We remove the excess composite from around the bracket base and cure the composites. And the process is repeated for all the teeth. In indirect bonding, the patient's models are sent to the lab. They will determine the long axis of the teeth and the center of the clinical crown, which will determine the proper positioning of the brackets. Then the brackets are glued with a temporary material to the teeth on these models, and they will be transferred to the mouth with some sort of tray, as we see now. The brackets will become incorporated into the tray and transfer to the dental clinic. At the clinic, the same procedure as in direct bonding is done. 
cleaning of the teeth surfaces, placing acid etching, then unfilled resin, then resin is placed on the bracket base, but in this case all the brackets, all the brackets are placed on the teeth using the tray and they are all cured at once. Now the main advantage of indirect bonding are that the bracket can be positioned more accurately in the laboratory and the clinical chair time is decreased. However, the technique is technique sensitive and the procedure require greater experience. The removal of excess adhesive can be more difficult and more time consuming with some techniques. The risk for adhesive deficiencies under the bracket is greater and there is a risk of adhesive leakage to the interproximal gingival areas which can disturb oral hygiene procedures and finally failure rates with some methods seems to be slightly higher. The comprehensive orthodontic treatment involves three stages. The first stage is alignment and leveling during which there will be elimination of rotations, bringing the teeth to one line, buccoling volley, and one level occluso gingivally, following the arch wire shape. This stage facilitates future treatment stages. The second stage involves correction of molar relationship, as well as space closure. For example, spaces that occur as a result of extraction. So in the above picture, we can see that a closed coil spring is used to retract the anterior segment. And in the lower picture, we can see class 3 elastics are used to close the extraction space in the lower jaw and correct molar relationship. The third stage is finishing. It may be also termed as settling. After closing all the spaces and having correct molar relationship, we will optimize the occlusal relationship between the dental arches by using zigzag elastics as shown in these photos. After placement of the fixed orthodontic appliance, the patient must have frequent visit to the orthodontist office. These visits are necessary to evaluate the progress of treatment and to make the necessary adjustment. However, there is no agreement or evidence to support a specific time frame. Most orthodontists see their patients every four weeks. However, others see them every six, eight, or even 10 weeks intervals. These visits are also necessary to avoid or prevent problems during orthodontic treatment. The problems encountered are caries and decalcification, debonded brackets, loose bands, and soft tissue problems. Regarding treatment duration, there is no specific way to estimate the duration of treatment. It usually takes 12 to 30 months, depending on the complexity of the case. Missing appointments will lengthen the treatment duration. Some pain may be felt in the teeth for a period of 3 to 5 days following each adjustment visit, especially during eating. Pain level is mild to moderate, and an analgesic like paracetamol can be used to decrease it. Some pain may be felt with salty or sour food because of ulcers that often develop as a result of rubbing the cheeks and lips with the appliance during normal function. This usually lasts for a few days after insertion and can be reduced by using orthodontic wax. As shown here, there is an ulcer on the lower lip and by placing orthodontic wax, the irritation is reduced and healing is promoted. Trauma to the cheek may also happen because of protruding wire. It is better to go to the orthodontist to fix it. Meanwhile, 
orthodontic wax can be used to reduce irritation. This video demonstrates using orthodontic wax to promote healing through reducing irritation to an ulcer. The ulcer is related to the bracket position. So we use a small amount of orthodontic wax. The area is dried and then the wax is applied to the bracket. And by minimizing irritation, the ulcer will heal quickly. The wax should be removed before eating and replaced with a new one. So what are the instructions for patients wearing fixed orthodontic appliances? What should we ask the patients to do? First, regarding teeth cleaning. We should tell the patient that it is necessary to clean the teeth with a toothbrush using fluoridated toothpaste for three minutes immediately after each time you eat and before going to bed. We should emphasize that it's after each time you eat, it is not the main meals, and therefore it is advised to have what's called the traveler brush. It is a sort of brush that can be folded and can be held anywhere so that the patient can use it whenever he eats. Secondly, we should tell them that you should clean all the surfaces of the teeth thoroughly, including the area between the teeth and the brackets. And they should keep in mind that cleaning is more difficult and takes more time than without an orthodontic appliance. Fluoridated alcohol-free mouthwash should be used at least once daily after tooth brushing. And we should tell the patient that they should avoid eating or rinsing the mouth for at least 20 minutes after using the mouthwash. Having snacks and drinks with a high sugar content without proper cleaning of the teeth will result in permanent damage. What about food? The patient should avoid snacks and drinks with a high sugar content between meals and at bedtime. They should also avoid sticky food, especially sweets and chewing gum. This is because they increase accumulation of bacterial plaque around orthodontic brackets, which will lead to decay. Patients should avoid hard food like nuts, as it can damage or break the appliance. And fruits, vegetables that are relatively hard, like apples or carrots, should be cut into small pieces before eating. The patient should avoid frizzy drinks and should avoid consuming large quantities of fruit juice. And since it will be necessary to use a toothbrush after eating, most patients find it best to avoid snacks between the main meals. In case of appliance breakage, you should contact your orthodontist immediately to schedule an emergency appointment. You shouldn't wait for your regular appointment as this may result in unfavorable tooth movement or further damage to the appliance, which will eventually increase treatment duration. The repeated breakages of an appliance because of poor care may result in stopping treatment. And finally, we should ask them to wear a protective shield while practicing contact sports. This is a mouth guard that can be worn by the patient during contact sports. Finally, we should ask the patient to maintain regular visits and to follow the orthodontist instructions. We ask the patient to do good tooth cleaning, but we have to demonstrate how to do proper oral hygiene measures. Tooth brushing is preferably done using V-trim toothbrush to clean the appliance and a regular brush to clean the occlusal and lingual or palatal surfaces of the teeth. This video demonstrates how brushing is done for a patient wearing fixed orthodontic appliance. Circular motion is used to clean the appliance and the cervical region of the teeth. Then 
at an angle around 45 degrees, the appliance is cleaned from the incisal direction as well as from gingival direction. The occlusal surfaces of the teeth are cleaned as well as the palatal or lingual surfaces. An interdental brush should be used for detailed cleaning, for cleaning between the teeth and cleaning between the teeth and the appliance. This short video demonstrates how an interdental brush is used. An interdental brush may be a straight or angled one. You can see that it is inserted in the interdental region and the area between the teeth and between the teeth and the appliance is cleaned. An interdental brush should be used once daily, unlike the brush which should be used after each meal. Flossing is also required. The floss is passed between the arch wire and the teeth using floss threader, as demonstrated. A super floss may also be used without the need for a floss threader, and alternatively, a water flosser may be used. This video demonstrates how to use a floss threader. This is the floss threader. We pass the floss in the hole, and then with the floss threader, we pull one end of the floss below the arch wire. Then we do flossing the regular way. We hold both ends and pass the floss incise or gingivally and pull it out and repeat the process. This video demonstrates using super floss. Super floss has an initial rigid portion which can pass between the teeth. Then a spongy portion is used to floss the interdental region. For each region, we should clean both teeth, the right and left. Then the super floss is taken out and inserted between another two teeth. A water jet, which is a device that uses water at high pressure, can be used to remove plaque from the interdental as well as cervical region of the teeth. And finally, mouth rinses that are fluoridated are usually used to maintain proper oral hygiene. So what are the risks that can be associated with orthodontic treatments? The first risk is enamel demineralization. The incidence of demineralization during fixed appliance therapy is high, and it can result in the development of enamel opacities on the labial surfaces of the teeth. There are two main etiological factors that are poor oral hygiene and a diet high in refined sugars. When both of these factors combined over a long term, they will inevitably result in demineralization and permanent marking of the teeth. The second risk is enamel fracture and abrasion. There is a small risk of fracture at the enamel dentinal junction when removing the brackets. And this is particularly true with early ceramic bracket systems. However, modern ceramic bracket bases are designed with features that facilitate easier debonding, which reduces the risk of enamel fracture. Attrition of teeth occluding against ceramic brackets is the most important disadvantage of the ceramic brackets. The clinician must avoid bracket contact with opposing teeth. The third risk is root resorption, and external apical root resorption is an almost universal finding following orthodontic treatment. 
it is very common but it is usually not clinically significant and has no influence on the long-term health of the teeth severe root resorption and by severe we mean that there is more than one-third of the root length is lost has been reported to occur in between one and five percent of orthodontically treated teeth and this radiograph demonstrates severe resorption of the centrals and lateral incisors the fourth risk is damage to the pulp the use of excessive force or pushing the apex of teeth through the cortical plate can result in loss of vitality teeth with a history of trauma are more susceptible to vitality loss during treatment but fortunately loss of vitality is a rare complication of orthodontics the fifth risk is gingivitis and gingival irritation is inevitable with the use of fixed appliances especially when bands are used and this is exacerbated by poor oral hygiene as we can see in this photo however gingival health improves significantly following the removal of appliance the sixth risk is alveolar bone loss small loss of alveolar bone height was seen in relation to the teeth adjacent to extraction sites however there appears to be no long-term effect on periodontal health from orthodontic treatment but patients with active periodontal disease they can have rapid increase in bone loss therefore periodontal diseases should be treated should be stable and well maintained in these patients prior to starting orthodontic treatment orthodontic treatment can also result in recession when teeth are moved excessively in a labial or buccal direction resulting in bony dehiscence and gingival recession the seventh risk is oral ulceration and traumatic ulceration in susceptible individuals is common particularly during the early stages of treatment as pointed out earlier the last risk is allergic reactions patients who are allergic to nickel could have non-specific intraoral signs including erythematous areas and severe gingivitis despite good oral hygiene this is because the arch wires and brackets contain nickel in the next slides we will have brief introduction about the instruments that are commonly used during the course of fixed orthodontic treatments. We will start with separating pliers. These are used for the placement of elastic separators. A bracket holding tweezer or bracket positioning tweezer is used for holding and positioning the brackets during bonding. Matthew hemostat is a multipurpose instrument that is used to place elastic and steel ligatures on orthodontic brackets. How pliers is a utility pliers which has serrated tips for gripping wires. It is useful for placement and removal of arch wires as well as placement of pins and other auxiliaries. Cutters, we have both hard and ligature wire cutters. A distal end cutter cuts and holds the wire distally to the buccal tube or bracket. A height gauge is used to check the height of the bracket placement from the incisal edge. Band seater is used to place and adjust orthodontic bands.
Band removing pliers, as the name implies, it helps removing bands. Bracket dewonding pliers, may be straight or angulated, is used to remove the bonded brackets. Thank you so much.